Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today is finally Android 11 day. Uh, Google took the covers off of Android 11. It is official. It is finally available in final form. And of course, we have had it running in beta form and early access as far as Pixel devices. But now we're starting to see other companies starting to recruit for Android 11, namely Xiaomi, Oppo, and of course, Huawei. Uh, so let's not waste any time. Let me share with you guys my top 10 favorite features of Android 11. And let's talk about those beta programs that are starting up for Android 11 from the other OEMs. This is TK. Let's dive in. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So what we have in front of us is a certain number of devices that are either a starting the beta program or have had some type of a, a release that's available right now. The Mi 10 on the left here from Xiaomi, as well as the X2 Pro and the Huawei P40 Pro, uh, from what I understand, at least from an article that was posted over on the XDA portal, they're, all three companies are looking for beta testers to be able to try out their software, to basically try out the next version of Android 11 for their devices. Um, now, OnePlus did release in basically developer preview for, and of course, the early release of Oxygen OS 11, as I did the demo for you guys running on the video, and we'll give you guys a link to that in the description below. But I haven't heard any word yet as far as a beta program is available from them yet. And lastly, what we have here is the Pixel 4 XL that's going to be running the full version of Android 11 since it was announced. So general consensus is uh, beta programs are going to be starting, uh, basically looking for beta testers as starting, as well as, of course, what we have here with OnePlus is that they started with the developer preview 4, which was the last update that I received on Android, uh, basically running Oxygen OS 11. So the new optimizations that we've seen. Um, all of this information, of course, will be linked in the description below to the article and, of course, a link to that video that I did on my OnePlus 8 running Oxygen OS 11 in uh, that version of it with the developer preview 4. So what I have in front of us here is the Pixel 4a. And, of course, it'll be one of the first devices to receive the Android 11 update as this is a Pixel device. So great camera performance, $350 uh, price point, And of course, I'll give you guys a link to that in the description below in case you'd want to know more about it. So we're going to cover today a lot of the visual stuff that we normally see with Android 11 that are always going to be basically uh, interesting to see if what company will actually bring this over. So first and foremost is the new power button. You notice that the power button is actually very different. Uh, we actually have the emergency contact number here, power off, of course, as well as restart that's present all the way on the top. Google Pay Cards is actually integrated now into the UI as a middle part. And of course, we have the Google Home and the automation toggles that are present on the bottom. One of the really cool things about it is that we actually can control what's in here and what shows up based on what we're using. And the nice thing about it is all you have to do is install the Google Home application, log into it with your account on your device. And once you do that, you'll be able to actually configure and customize all of the different controls that we have here. Uh, first and foremost, of course, you can have any toggle that you have. And of course, uh, configure it to your liking. But the beautiful part about it is it's available with the easy part of basically just pressing it and holding on the power button to activate it and it works great. So that's number one for me on the list. It's going to be basically this the new power menu. And of course, second thing on the list is going to be the new bubble configuration. Now, in the past, we've seen Android, basically Facebook Messenger being one of the only applications supported. Right now, Google Messages is also supported. And the best way to do it is that you just have to turn it on. And once you get a notification from the application, and of course, you customize and prioritize the actual sender. So I prioritize myself as a priority in, in the notification panel. What we'll notice there essentially is the ability for me to not only interact with the actual message, but also be able to dock it, move it. And it actually will work with more applications as we get these things turned on from developers. So. The cool thing about it is this is native built in now to Android and hopefully we'll be able to see it coming into other devices from different companies. But the main benefit that we're going to jump into here, of course, is the ability of talking about our aggregate notifications. So that's the next thing that I'm going to talk to you guys about. So first we talked about the power button, the notification bubbles, nice, really nice feature. And of course, now we have actually categorized notifications. So you notice right here we have conversations. I was talking to my buddy Max, myself sending a test message. Uh, we also have section here for just general notifications. So Facebook, Instagram, um, this is Asphalt 9, and of course, Call of Duty. And last also are going to be the silent ones. So this is Google News, uh, sometimes some of the Twitter ones, and of course, the uh, just the standard weather one. Uh, a lot of these things can also be customized depending on the apps. So it looks like Telegram X is not part of it. And of course, if I go Hangout is also not part of it. Han uh, Android Messages does seem to be part of it. And when I did give myself priority, it did make it into an actual bubble for me. So 
great way and of course it also gives us the ability of basically higher, uh, putting a more priority for it at the top here when it's actually being done that way. Since we kind of covered the power menu, the bubble, and the notification shade, let's talk about the Recents app. So the Recents app actually kind of changed a little bit as well. So what we're noticing here is now that the screenshot button is actually a button that's present here as well as the select option. And what I want to do here is this is Telegram X, the application. I can actually take a screenshot of it. So let's go ahead and click that. And this is the new screenshot option. I can actually share it or directly go into edit and I can also go, you know, customize it to whatever I'd like. And when I'm done, I can actually share it. The really nice thing though is that let's say I want to be able to select things from it. I'll go ahead and hit the select button and it automatically auto highlights the areas for me that I'm able to select as text. So an example, I can actually highlight and highlight the word developer and contact and copy it or search for it. So I'll go ahead and hit the search. It'll open up basically Google and give us access to the search for the developer contact. It's very nice and very simple. Now you don't actually have to turn this on, but this does help us know what's available to select. So I can actually just press and hold here. And it'll give me the same selection, but if I press the select option, it just highlights everything on the screen that I'm able to select. Very nice, very simple to use. And again, the screenshot option is present and it is very simple to use. So you could still use the shortcuts with the, fun uh, the actual power and the volume up, but this one actually now becomes much easier, especially if you want to use it directly from the Recents app. And it actually takes a screenshot of the app, not the way that it is right now. So you'll notice right there, the actual screenshot only shows the actual application, doesn't show the notification panel and so on. That one still functions with the buttons. Now, the next thing that's really nice also is the ability of having a native screen recorder. And that's something that we haven't had in Android for a long time. We've had it as a feature that's available with third-party devices like other companies, Huawei, Oppo, of course, and Xiaomi. And now we actually have the ability of using it as a native recorder, recording audio directly from the microphones, and you can select which one it is, show touch screen, and of course, you can customize it and then start recording on your screen. You'll see the notification at the top, three, two, one, and it actually tells you with a vibration on the phone that you are recording. Once you're done, all you have to do is tap on it, give it a second to save, and then it'll be available for you directly within your galleries. And then of course, under screenshots, you can actually see it today. It recorded it as a video. So very nice and very simple, but now we have a native screen recording built in. What we talked about obviously here is a lot of cool visual things, but let's also talk about music and music control because the actual music player is actually did change a little bit. So before we get too far, let me go ahead and open up the notification panel. Notification panel. You'll notice there's a silent notification here, and that's the YouTube uh, music application. So 1 a.m. in Paris by BT, that's a song I was listening to before and I'm actually not able to interact with it because it's not active. So let's go ahead and jump into the YouTube Music app. And here it is, the song that was playing before. I am going to lower the volume mostly for copyright issues. Uh, the other speaking of option here, obviously uh, what we have here is transcribing options are also available. Captions are not available in this. I'm also able to configure the new sound menu that's very